Thank you, Headmaster Sheehy, and congratulations, class of 2011. Zhao Shang Hao, which is either good morning in Mandarin or I set my foot on fire. Either way, it's a good wake up call. Many of you have traveled many miles to attend Canterbury. Some of you have even crossed an ocean. One of my few claims to fame in high school was being the student who traveled the furthest to attend school at Canterbury. Without the aid of Google or MapQuest, a relying on a globe in Copley Library and some string we found, we determined that coming from Seattle was about 400 miles further away than my friend Roberto Crete, who is from El Salvador. Well, that was then, and this is now. One of the great joys of my job is traveling to China, India, Brazil, Europe, and most points in between. The world is small and getting smaller. Get out and explore it. I understand that a number of you have traveled and studied abroad, and that's wonderful. I encourage all of you to live in a country where they don't speak your native tongue. You'll learn about yourself and rapidly learn how to ask for food or a date. You'll learn about another culture and you'll learn about your own country. You know, there are many students your age living in the world who are passionate about the U.S. and some of them are trying to attend college right here. They are your peer group. Go to another country for three months, six months, or a year. Get uncomfortable in another culture. It's well worth the ride. As I've met some of you during the last two days, the most frequently asked questions are, can you really drive those good-looking Kenworth and Peterbilt trucks? And the answer is yes, although I recommend practicing in a parking lot the size of the Meadowlands. And the second question is, were you really all league in basketball, and is that why they named the gym after you? I wish I could say yes, but the truth is, I was so uncoordinated that I was cut from thirds basketball, <laughs> but was given a chance to play fourths basketball, which I don't think you have anymore. My classmates resembled the cast from Revenge of the Nerds. As fourth formers, our best game was thrashing the local grammar school, St. Joseph's eighth grade team, by the score of 12 to four. Not a day goes by when I don't think about that glorious day. <laughs> that was my athletic highlight at Canterbury. So what's with naming of the gym? Well, Winston Churchill said, and no, he wasn't in my class, we make a living by what we get. We make a life by what we give. And I think what he means is give back to society and those in need. And on that point, I'm very proud of the class of 2011. You've enthusiastically embraced your role of giving back, as demonstrated by your service trips to Central America to build community centers, your environmental cleanup day in the town of New Milford, visiting local nursing homes, and your trips to Lourdes helping the Malads. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, how about up some applause for the class of 2011? Keep that spirit alive. Give what you can. Time, energy, ideas, and even financially. It's a good feeling and much appreciated by those you help. So back to Pigot Arena. Well, long story short, I was fortunate to be able to assist Canterbury, and it was either naming the gym or third form study hall. You pick them. <laughs> Of course, naming a building or even thinking of a building 40 years ago was the last thing on my mind. In 1968, when I entered, Canterbury was all boys. We all lived in North House, which you know as Duffy House. That's my room directly over the door leading from the art center. You can still see the remnants of the sheets I tied together as I tried to make my escape from the rock. When I attended Canterbury, during the first week of school, Every third former spent most of their time crying. I know I did. And wondering if this was the biggest mistake of my life. There were no cell phones to call home. 
Letters were hard to write for a 14-year-old boy, and our proctors had read Catcher in the Rye and Lord of the Flies once too often. <laughs> it was an interesting time, but we survived and eventually adopted to the rigors of the school. The Irish poet W.B. Yeats said, education is not the filling of a pail, but the lighting of a fire. But the only fire that most of my classmates thought about was sneaking a smoke in the woods behind Carter House. I know you're not thinking about that. So I'm not sure what you think of Canterbury as you're graduating, but I expect some of you are ready to jump to the next chapter in your lives. Some are a little misty-eyed as good friends are going different directions. And a few are wondering if you have time to complete that final paper for Mr. Mandler's English class. Whatever your thoughts or emotions are right now, I do know they'll soften and mellow as the years progress. And when asked what I learned at Canterbury, <clears throat> my biggest takeaway was the ability to sit down and really read, study, and learn. And upon reflection, that may be the biggest life skill you've learned. I still thank Canterbury for instilling that discipline in my life. However, like many lives, my own track was slightly erratic and did not conform to my parents' idea of a straightforward path to success. After working hard to earn a college engineering degree, I had the wonderful harebrained idea that I'd like to get a theater degree and move from the West Coast to New York City and take Broadway by storm. The passionate soliloquy that I delivered to my parents on that subject was met with stony silence, perhaps a precursor to the reviews I would eventually earn in the theater world. <laughs> Nevertheless, I pursued my dream, gained my college theater degree, moved to New York, attended one of the great theater schools, and quickly became proficient at installing drywall in commercial buildings in Greenwich Village. <laughs> That won't happen to you. But like a good movie, the ending seems to have turned out okay. Yes, I went back to the truck factory, working on the assembly line, lived and worked in different countries, and 40 years later, the rest is history. The good news is that I've continued to keep my love of the theater alive. I'm now on the board of the Royal Shakespeare Company in England. And yes, Ian McKellen will occasionally wear his white Gandalf robe from Lord of the Rings when he's eating fish and chips. So what's the point? Keep your passions alive and also figure out how to make a living. That'll keep your parents happy. Try to use the left and right side of your brain. Amaze your friends with your knowledge of art and science. And finally, if you have the energy, the finances, and the interest, I recommend you earn a master's degree in whatever topic arouses your passion. A master's degree today is the equivalent to an undergraduate degree 40 years ago. And here's an interesting factoid. In our current recession, people with master's degree have a lower unemployment rate than those with only a bachelor degree. Great ideas are redefining your world every single day. Keep learning along the path of life. A good goal is not to peak too early. You know, many of you will be attending your 50-year Canterbury reunion in 2061. Wow, that's scary. Keep your stories fresh and your life energized. Life is a long runway. In conclusion, Canterbury is a wonderful first stage in the booster rocket of life. Take advantage of your incredible opportunities travel, learn from other cultures, be artsy and scientific, keep your passions alive, and give back. God bless you. Go Saints!